how many pairs of distinct positive integers a and b, both less than 100, is a over b the square of an integer? Now, here, well, if we're taking distinct positive integers, and if they're less than 100, well, that means if you're dividing them, they can't get bigger than 100, meaning this a over b is less than 100. So like, we can't go like from 4 like 105 or 101. And if it's also the square of an integer, aka it's a perfect square, well, that basically means that a over b has to be a perfect square, a, a positive perfect square, less than 100. Which means, well, then that's just 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and 81. Well, first of all, I'll start small 1. Well, that means a over b and b are equal, and well, they are distinct positive integers. So 1 is out of our thoughts. Well, for a 4, I'll keep track of that. I'll make a little chart for what a is and for what b is. Well, first of all, a can just obviously be 4 and b be 1, since 4 over 1, sure enough, is 4. Or a can be 8. B can be two. Now this just keeps going on and on forever, right? Since well, well, not forever, for a long time, since about twelve and three, sixteen and four, and so on and so forth. But we don't, we don't ever, like like really need to write out like like twenty or so or whatever, twenty or so of these, since since we just need to know, well, for whatever number B is, well then A is just four times that. So like for example, you know that like for the if a is a uh, b is twenty five, well then a is just a hundred times usual. Four times twenty five is a hundred. Just like how four times three a four times three is twelve. So well if b is twenty five, then a is a hundred. But then that means if a is a hundred, then they're a less than one hundred, which means twenty five by hundred doesn't work since then a hundred is equal to a hundred, not less than. So as we back it up a little bit. So well, if it be as 24, and like, well, we already know that 4 times 25 is 100. So 1 less 4 is just 100 minus 4, 96. Which means really there's just 1 to 24 of these like pairs of numbers, which means for a 4, there are 24 possibilities. Well, for 9, we can now see that we don't need to write out all of these. Just maybe you know, the first one or two to get an idea. So uh, we still start with, first of all, a can just be nine and b can be one, since nine divided by one is still nine. Now this again just keeps on going on and on forever, and then we can just find when uh, here, nine times whatever number b is, is equal or uh, greater than 100, and we can just start backing it up until we get less than 100, and then that just be our answer. Well, uh, 9 times uh, 9, here is, uh, actually, I just use a whole number, uh, 10, 9 times 10 is 90, well then, that's, well then, 9 times 11 is just easily 99, that means, well then, for the multiples of 9, they just go from 1 to 11. Since, well, 9 times 11 is obviously 99, which means for 9, well, then there's 11 options for 9. Well, then if there's 24 options for 4, and then 11 options for a, a 9, or like, or basically, or like, like, think, like, like, like if you want the outcome to be now, then there's 11 choices to do that. So you can just add these up. 24 plus 11. Well, okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. Well, for 16, again, we can do the same thing. I'll just erase that really quick. And for six, uh, 16, what was it? Yeah. Well, first of all, again, I'll start with A is 16 and B is 1. 16 over 1. Well, this goes all the way up. Okay, 16 is a little bit harder. Like, I don't know if it's 16 that well. Um, 
just a uh, four, a six, six, six. So that looks kind of close, six times. Um, right, no, 16 times six. Well, uh, 10 times six is 60, plus uh, six times six is 36, so 60 plus 36. is a uh, 96 and well uh, seven times 16 is just gonna be way over 100 which means all I kind of got it there are six options if you want the outcome of a over b to be 16. well here thankfully 25 is a lot easier since well i don't even need the chart for that it's just 25 and 1 50 and 2 75 and 3 and then well 104 is well then a will be 100 and you can't have equal to 100 which means for 25, it's also just three options. Well, uh, for uh, 36, when there's still 36 and one, uh, double that, 60, 72. And if you add on to that, well then it's just over 100. So, since 70 plus 30 is already uh, 100, and then you just have that unit you know, to worry about. So then there's just two for 36, for 49, well then if you double 49, you get 98, so really close, but you can still get to, right, um, uh, what is it, 49 and 1 and uh, 98 and 2. And if you double 64, you go way over 100, like 120 something. In fact, to be accurate, 128, but in other words, it's just 64 and 1. And for 81, if, it's not hard to know that, there's just one choice for that, 81 and 1, since, you've, since if you double that, you get something close to 200, not 100. So, and then basically this is all the choices we have, right? Since these 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and 81 are all the possible outcomes for A over B. They're all the possible outcomes. And then these are all the choices or the possibilities or the number of ways you can get each one of those outcomes. So we don't overlap, we don't miscount anything, since well, again, you can't get lonely one over there, and you can't get 100, which is, well, then you just have like 100 over one, or, well, you know, so you get one point. One of those, I can add these up. Uh, 24 and 11 is uh, 35, plus six, 41, plus three, 44, plus two is 46, uh, 48, and one, one is two, which means you get an exact number of 50 states.